Welcome back to the Contaminated Dungeon. This is the Fade the Public Podcast. I am Nicholas, that is Animal, and this is Snacks. We are doing a draft guide giveaway, as uh, we promised last week, for following these two hooligans. If you did so, they had already chosen the two people that won the draft guide. We will be giving away two per week for all y'all that follow these two on Twitter. It's Animal underscore BDGE, Snacks underscore BDGE. Today's episode before we do that is going to be a very very special episode we're inviting someone into the dungeon not physically but physically more spiritually and emotionally and you will see them physically on the screen it is not noah so this is someone outside (laughs) of the big dogs team this is a pretty big fucking name it's a big dog it's it's i would consider him a big fucking dog in the industry so we won't give any uh surprise away except for it's 100 percent in the title i'm pretty sure so you probably (laughs) already know who it is but he will be joining us in a little while, we just want to go over some housekeeping stuff. So you guys get into your draft guide giveaways. Thank you all for following them. That's yes, thanks really, for all the follows. It's really not a good. Yeah, it's, I, it's um, honestly been it's overwhelming. Uh, yeah, really awesome. I hope Thank I can you. please you with some good tweets. How else do you want to please? Them? Highly unlikely. Whoa. All right. So I chose completely at random. I took all the people and I put them in. Just fucking a say the name. Excel sheet. And it is Connor Kaminki. Connor Kaminki. What's the at? At Connor Kaminki. How do you spell it? I'm, I'm just Kamink. actually curious how you say the last name. It's uh, K-A-M-I-N-K-E. Okay, so DM Max, DM Animal on Twitter. He will forward it to me, and I'll I'll hook you up. Uh, you got Congrats, brother. DM him your email address, and I'll take care of it, Mr. Snackalus. Yeah, so this was just a very difficult decision. I really want to thank everybody for the follows. Um kind of making me feel important for the first time in my life are we gonna cry no. can you at least hold a cry no, until I'm, I'm not crying at all i'm trying to milk it I'm trying to feel good I'm trying to thank everybody but i picked a winner uh, i gave me the greatest compliment i've ever gotten in my life told me reminding me of um jeremy renner from from the town fuck you which is one of my fu- <laughs> fuck you fuck you fuck you, fuck you. Which, which is one of my my favorite movies emmett paul brown emmett paul brown Congratulations on the second uh, draft guide giveaway. Make sure you DM snacks. Your Yo, he email gave me address, a compliment too, and I will uh, and I will hook what, that really? up. Yeah, no, it wasn't the Departed. I mean, um, maybe it's just in a really nice the guy. Town? The town was it a movie reference? It must not have been that great of a I don't compliment. Know. I'll have to get back and I'll, I'll, I'll look at it. And I'll find out. All right, so we're uh, we're more than a week into August, which means real fucking drafts are coming up, cool, like around the corner. We're almost we're almost fucking here, Bro. which means our high stakes league, the E-Town Get Down that we've been doing for this will be the 11th annual. We always vlog it. We make a whole video out of it, which you will see in about a month. We have our league meeting next week. So next week's episode of Fade the Public will literally be our live meeting, the entire thing broken down. So if you guys are looking for new rules, if you guys are looking for ways to implement those rules, anything new to your league with you your league You just want to see how a professional league does it. Yeah, if you want to see a Check dictator in his true fucking dictatorship role watch me fucking slam these little boys down it's a democracy week. we vote on everything nah, fuck, fuck, <laughs> you. Fuck, but, you. fuck you fuck well, you one thing wait we, that means i'm not gonna be able to bring up the the punishment oh you can bring it up we'll what just bleep mean? it out or something what do you mean the punishment i've only brought up his, for the last his, seven his years? league punishment Bro, i put that in our fucking i'm pretty sure there's like a, every year oh, you sure? i'm pretty yeah, sure there's a picture of it yeah there's a picture i put it on instagram like multiple times god forbid so god forbid we like we i mean we don't vote it's just now it's gonna be you they're gonna they're gonna know yeah now it's you on tape saying i'm not saying it they're going to know who it is, but if we didn't fucking do it, how are they going to know it was us? You know what? Listen. Fucking fix yourself over there. I, no, we need I, to be ready to go. Here's one thing we want to do. Here's one thing that we implemented in our league a few years ago. We call it the confession cam. Barkley, Julio Jones, McCaffrey. Someone will get hurt. One of those three guaranteed torn ACL. We're in the 10th round, which means keeper. The keeper rule is currently in effect. There's one, two, three, four, five. Five more picks until my pick. Carry on Johnson is still on the board. If I can get carry on in the 10th, it's gonna be a top two round pick next year. I want him so fucking bad. Love this heart. That was me drawing a heart. Uh, seed one chain, seed from the bird. Um, ready to go this year after round two. I have Tom Brady and Kareem Hunt. I wasn't expecting that duo, but my God, do I love it. Much like in real world, road rules, whatever, those fucking reality shows where they come in stumbling drunk at like 2 a.m. and they Mm -hmm. spill their beans. That's what we do in our actual live draft. We put it in the vlog. But what we are imposing on the the big dogs, or if you're watching for the first time, you are still technically part of the public until you get to the end of the video. We want you guys to implement a confession cam into your live draft. And what we're going to do is chop up the best clips that we get of confession cams into a little... 
um, a little segment. A montage. A little montage. I couldn't think of the word it's montage, montage for some reason. It's a, mon- it's a montage. When the confession cam gets in your league. Get- okay. So, that was pretty good. That was pretty fucking good. I was going to keep it rolling. but Yeah, you should have. Um, so what a confession cam is, is, is get a camera or set up a phone in the corner of your wherever the fuck you're having your league. It's got to be a live draft, of course. And then when someone makes a terrible pick. Or if you have a strategy that you want, you're trying to call your, you're calling your shot or whatever. That's where you fucking spill the beans right there into the confession cam. And it'll be really fun. You don't even have to film the actual draft, but it'll be fun looking back on it with your friends afterwards being like, oh, this motherfucker, like this is what he said about that pick X, Y, Z. So I'm pretty sure you said something about Steve taking Kareem Hunt at like six last year. Right? Oh, you did, you fucker. Was it me? <laughs> well, it was you and me. It and actually, been. I think... Uh, uh, might have been all of us. It was actually us three. I whispered <laughs> into the... Oh, no, it wasn't you. It was... It I was whispered into the camera. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. I was like, Kareem Hunt at six. And I turned the camera to snacks. And he was just like... <laughs> <laughs> we just had Kareem Hunt go number six overall. Come on, man. And then you went into the camera and said something really dumb. I don't yeah, remember what it was. You were like cheering right. and it was ridiculous. Well, he's just carried that over to our podcast now. I was, I was <laughs> hyped about taking the Jacksonville Jaguars defense in the ninth round. That yeah. worked out. Goat pick. Yeah. Really happy So exactly. You. So you'll capture moments like that. Yeah, so do a confession cam. Send us the best of, or send us the entire confession. Actually, don't do the entire thing, but send us some of the best <laughs> clips from the confession cam, and we will uh, make a cool little montage, and you will be featured on Fade the Public when uh, that episode hits in September. I think that's all the housekeeping we got. So without further ado, I think it's time for you to hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Make sure you're following all of us on the Twitter world. Make sure you're following our guest on Twitter. And y'all ready to jump into the interview? Yeah, let's do it. Welcome back, big dogs. As you could see, our special guest, Mr. Evan Silva, is in the building. Um, So most of you have probably heard of this man by now. He is literally, Evan, do you look at yourself as like, I'll let you kind of intro in a second, but I want to know if you look at yourself as like the OG in the fantasy industry, because at this point, I don't really know if... uh, if you could talk about fantasy football without your name kind of popping up into this. So I wanted to introduce you to our audience. This is the, you know, big dog nation over here. I am Nick. This is animal. This is snacks. Thank you for coming on. We're going to talk a lot about the the new brand, the new company that you just, uh, that you just launched in the fantasy space in the NFL space. We're going to talk a little bit of fantasy later on player analysis, but welcome to the dungeon, my man. And thank you again for, uh, for coming on. Thanks so much for having me guys. No, I've just been like, you know, just been grinding, grinding the, the fantasy football streets and just, you know, trying to rip the shit out of the Giants whenever I get the chance. <laughs> yeah, we, we know that all too well. That's, that's, uh, how, that's how this all started. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's actually crazy. Yeah, for people that aren't following, you know, the four of us on Twitter, Evan's a big proponent of, you know, how NFL teams and front offices kind of manage their rosters. And, you know, to, to put it nicely, the Giants have done a, a subpar job over the last few years. Evan's been very vocal about it. Snacks being... Some may say different. It's, uh, I mean, maybe one person in the entire world, and I think I'm looking at him right now. Uh, Snacks is a diehard Giants fan. Literally, when I say diehard, he would die for the Giants. It's, he, 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 it's he puts, unfortunately true. Name, name the things that you love in life again. Uh, well, I put it in this order all the time. It's uh, Giants tier one, then you have tier two family breathing, and then tier three is sex. So, yeah, so that that's, that's the level we're on, and he didn't take uh, kindly to Evan Silva's thrashing of the New York Giants and we'll let them constant kind of yeah we'll let them duke it out towards the end but I've dialed it back a little bit man you have and you know what Evan I appreciate it I think it's probably our newfound friendship that's done it to you maybe you're like (laughs) maybe this kid's uh he's a nice guy I don't have to ruin his life every every single day on Twitter but I I we appreciate it We'll, we'll talk later on about that so yeah so let's let's jump into the new stuff that you have going on right now so for a long long time you were known as like the roto world guy right you had built a personal brand through your, your writing and your analysis and your deep, deep, deep work on Roto World and just doing a fantastic job kind of getting out a lot of the numbers and the trends that most typical fantasy players might not have un, you know, uncovered had you not been there kind of putting that out for them weekly and throughout the summer and whatnot. But since then, you have newly kind of left that position and started your own company, I want to say. Um, it's Establish the Run. It, it, the home base is EstablishTheRun.com. I'm interested how you personally look at Establish the Run. Do you look at it as a brand? Do you look at it as a, a company with a, a very business-centered mindset? Do you look at it as just a website that you want to you know, have all the best uh, analysis on there for fantasy players? Like, you know, I'll, 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 I'll hand the mic to you and um, I'm, I'm interested in how you look at things. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I just view it as a, a fantasy football website right now where we cover daily fantasy, best ball, season-long fantasy. And we have like a, a bunch of different like uh, ways to approach fantasy. And uh, that begins with uh, some of the writers that we've hired, we brought on uh, with Josh Hermsmeyer, who um, writes about the, uh, the uh, air yards. He, he has his own website, airyards.com. Um, and he has used air yards as a way to pinpoint undervalued players, especially in DFS, like on DraftKings and FanDuel. And like 12 or of, of 16 or 17 weeks, the, the Millie Maker had one of his wide receivers that he identified. It's usually like a list of about 11. Definitely like the first five weeks, uh, at least one of the, those receivers was in the Millie Maker winner lineup. Um, so he had like a really successful uh, year last year with the, the Air Yards by Low model. That's going to be uh, up on the website. And also uh, Pat Thorman, who writes about snaps and pace, like how many plays does a team um, like if you can project that a team is going to run like 71 plays and offense is going to run 71 plays in a certain week. And then like, you know, another offense is going to run 59. You know, there's a big advantage to just having 12 more snaps on offense. Um, you can sort of think about it like in basketball, like, you know, I don't know if you've played, ever played basketball uh, DFS, but like you want to get like those, those teams that play out on the, the West coast, like, Phoenix and Sacramento and you know they play at like a really fast pace and you know sometimes they're bad but they're also really bad on defense um, and you know those games can get to be like real real high scoring. So at the core of what you guys are doing you're basically trying to package up the most predictive statistics or the things that you find most useful to fantasy footballers or gamblers or whatever and you're slowly putting a team together from the best parts of all of that to you know establish the run as you guys would put it yeah absolutely and then you know adam uh does his his weekly articles i do my weekly article it's called uh the matchups column and you know i talk about every fantasy relevant player in every game um, and people have over the years uh, found that pretty useful for daily fantasy and for season long um First of all, I think it just like because like I pay such close attention to everything, it can uh, it can kind of help you just like understand what offenses are trying to do um, and where they might be inhibited each week based on strengths and weaknesses of defense. You know, so we're trying to look at how does this player kind of match up with this defense. Yeah, you're kind of psychotic with that weekly matchup <laughs> column, only in the sense that it is an unbelievable yeah, amount of work. Yeah, the to amount put of work in. that goes in. Yeah, I can't imagine because I feel myself like wear and tear by the end of just a week and I don't do something to, to that level when I heard originally you know you put out the tweet like I'm leaving Roto World my first thought was like he does not want to write that matchup column anymore <laughs> this is the reason he's leaving he's burnt out I've gotten out yeah he's sure like I finally figured out and out for myself but can you like dive into that actual matchup column um, not exactly what it entails but behind the scenes how much work do you put into it because I, I can't even I, I wouldn't even want to guess a number because I feel like it would almost be disrespectfully low <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's just, I, it just takes all week, you know, it's just. <laughs> it's a lifestyle. It's I, a I lifestyle. don't do anything else, you yeah. know, like I, I have sustenance, sometimes too much sustenance, you know, and uh, I have my, you know, my daughter, I got to take her to, you know, her extracurriculars and take her to school, et cetera. But other than that, it's just all about writing that. And no, I'm going to write that thing probably until I pass away. I mean, <laughs> I, I like you to, that's so your lucky. baby. <laughs> I like to write it. You know, it's fun. It, it yeah, like really fun. prepares me as well, you know, like pulling all statistics and, you know, uh, understanding how injuries can impact uh, expectations for what's going to happen in a game. I love to write it. I'm, I'm never going to stop writing it. Yeah, I was going to say, you can't, uh, you have to, you have to love it if you're writing something to that depth because you will get burnt out so quickly if you're not. Now, you know, going back on a question I asked earlier, like how do you view this site? And it, it, it seems like more of just a, more of a resource for people, right? Like the best minds and the best stats and predictiveness. I'm very interested in behind the scenes from like a business perspective because, you know, you look at you, you look at Adam Leviton, two of the biggest faces in the entire industry in fantasy football. Now, when you have that sort of following, when you have that sort of like clout, as they would say, you have so much leverage, right? And I was actually surprised that you guys, you two in particular, hadn't really branched off and, and uh, did your own thing yet. And it seems almost like maybe you were comfortable where you are, like you loved what you were doing for Roto World. Uh, maybe you, you're not as you know, business centric as a person. Is that true? Or like, how, do you, how did you look at this venture, like you and Adam together? 
Yeah, that's th- those are some interesting observations. Uh, well, we did work together, first of all, for like five to six years. We, we both started at Roto World. He right. was smart enough to branch off and kind of capitalize on uh, when, you know, like 2014, 2015, when Daily Fantasy got really, really big. So, and he really capitalized on that. I mean, I, he, he's got to have the most popular Daily Fantasy show that, that there is. You know, they, rec- they record it with Al uh, Smizzle and right. mm-hmm. Jennings. I mean, everybody listens to that. So he did a good job that I stayed at, you know, the corporation, the big corporation. You sold uh, out, Evan. You sold out, man. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess. No, I just didn't. I just wasn't of an entrepreneurial state at that time. And I signed like a five-year contract like an idiot. You're the Le'Veon Bell of fantasy. Yeah, I was, <laughs> so I had to. Uh, so I had to wait for the contract to expire, essentially, you know. Okay. So finally got that opportunity, and um, we always enjoyed working together. We're, you know, re- really good friends, and finally got that opportunity this off season. He still has to do some stuff for, for DraftKings this year, um, but I'm, I'm totally committed to uh, EstablishTheRun.com. That's awesome. Yeah, we're, uh, we're super excited to see, like, what comes of this because I feel like with, with your guys' mindsets put together and mm-hmm. focused on one thing that, yeah. you know, when you, yeah, when you finally get to do something that you're truly passionate about, right. And you don't have all these things weighing you down, whether it's that yeah, there's contract, no, there's no or, contract holding you back now. It's really just, you can do whatever you feel like doing. Exactly. You put all your energy into this thing. So I, I have no doubt that what you guys produce over there is going to be fucking top quality in the industry. Plus there's an element of like, you know, I don't want to get too bald, old and fat without like taking a chance on myself, you Good, know, man. in you some capacity, that. you know, like I, if this doesn't work, like, I could probably go back and get get another job, you know, writing writing fantasy for some corporation. No way, Evan. No one, no one no. would hire you. Bro. I said you're done now. <laughs> I don't know if the resume is strong enough yet. <laughs> you, you could actually take snacks and spot if you want. Yeah, you're welcome <laughs> to come into the dungeon. No, but seriously, yeah, that's a. I mean, you have so much leverage at this point that companies companies would be fucking begging you to come and, and write for them or do whatever kind of content that that you would wish. So I'm really glad that you got that you guys branch out and, and did your own thing as some of the greats say the the ceiling is the roof the ceiling is the roof and i think that's exactly <laughs> what it is for you guys but um i know i know it would establish one you were talking about you're really focusing on like best ball and, and redraft and rank season long rank stuff like that as two new dynasty members this year to the dynasty world mm-hmm. uh do you guys think you're gonna go into that world and really dive into that or is that in the future plans i've played enough dynasty over the years that um and i've done enough dynasty content that yeah i mean like i incorporated into like everything that i like i wrote like a team a preview of every team you know i'd be like yo i think this guy's like a buy in dynasty or you know i think this is you know this guy's a sell in dynasty or you know he's like a, a really underrated dynasty asset you know i incorporate it into everything but the only uh truly like dynasty specific content that we have on there right now is like an 8,000 word article about just all the rookies and ranking them. And um, I think, I think I wrote about like 75 or 80 rookies um, undrafted guys, you know, go, go real. You have to go real, real deep on, on an article like that because dynasty players are, you know, they want depth, you yeah. know, um, cause the dynasty rosters range anywhere from like 25 to 40 guys. Oh yeah. Those startup yeah. drafts are no fucking joke, man. Yeah. So I think that in the future we may expand to like really have a, a major dynasty element to it, you know, where maybe we would even hire a writer to write specifically about dynasty content. There's a lot of great minds in the dynasty uh, fantasy football community. Yeah. Um, so I don't even think it would be hard to find a really good one, but yeah, just that's the content that we have right now uh, specific to dynasty is just incorporated throughout everything. Um, you know, all like the, the articles and everything, but, uh, but just that, that one big 8,000 word article on the rookies. Okay. Just kind of big. Yeah. So I was going to ask you, um, so when, when you think of something like establish the run, you have that, that idea, how long does it take to, you know, actually make it happen to just make it from an idea to, you know, a project, a business, uh, you know, something like, how long were you thinking of this? Was this something that like the contract held you back? You had it in there for a while? And what exactly was the, the launch date? When, when did it go live? I made this, the decision that, and I mean, I was still like kind of on the fence, but I made this, the decision that I was going to leave the corporation and go, you know, do something different from that, like probably like a year and a half ago. So I, I made that decision, you know, quite a while ago. Uh, but yeah, it, it kind of came together like in probably February. And then it, you know, probably took, what's, where are we at? We're, yeah, it went live technically on July 1st. Okay. 
Um, and then we actually uh, started giving out content on July 15th. So it's been up for shoot only not even a month yet. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, about, about 20 days, something like that. Yeah. So that makes sense. I mean, something like that, I, f I feel like takes pretty good amount of planning um, when you start to actually implement it, right? When, I mean, it's an idea in your head, but then you don't really yeah. think of all of the things that putting all the wheels in motion, right? Like you have team members and stuff. So that an, a, in its own right, you know, the communication back and forth, organizing the systems that you have in place. Um, can you talk about how involved you are on the business side of things? Cause when I look at your team, right, you guys have really, really, really solid fantasy analysts between yourself, Adam, Pat, and Josh, and I'm not actually sure who the other ones are behind the scenes. I'm assuming you have someone who's very business savvy, kind of putting a lot yes, of these things exactly. In I mean, and, and, and they've been smart about just being like, we're going to take care of the business stuff, you know, just you go do what, what you're good at. You know? That's so you, good. Yeah, that's, that's great. And I mean, I'm it sorry, would be a legitimate no. problem if they like tried to make me in charge of anything having to do with business. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're, you're, you're basically the engine of the marketing team. Uh, you might not know it, but as the influencer, you are, you know, the marketing team. And it's pretty cool that you guys are kind of, you know, combining forces. You're like the fucking Avengers coming together. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you guys like the A team? Yeah, <laughs> for real. How do you guys play off of each other? I know you said you're not so much of like a a business sense kind of guy, but you and Adam have worked together. You were in more of like a writing capacity, content creation. Now that maybe you don't have to do that much of, of business stuff together, but like, are there personality traits or characteristics about all, maybe all four or five, six of you guys that really you, you say, you see that maybe you're lacking in that Adam picks up for, or Josh picks up for and like vice versa. Tell me what's like the chemistry on the team. Yeah, I mean, I just, I think that everybody kind of brings a different talent to the table. Obviously Josh with his uh, with, you know, his air yards, like no one else has a, a, a regression model like that. And no one's really as smart as that dude. Like that dude is <laughs> he's facts. Smart. If, if he says some shit like, you know, running backs don't matter. Defenses don't matter. I'm like, fuck, I thought they did, but I'm going to believe. It's kind of like, it's kind of like this podcast. Yeah. I'm the smartest one here by a Stop. mile. And Stop. you guys. Stop. Stop. It's the most ignorant thing I've heard all day. Stop. <laughs> But yeah, sorry. Keep going on. Yeah, Josh is so so smart, and he brings that edge to your team for sure. Yeah, yeah, and he's like he's sick on podcasts too. I mean, you know, and Adam is like you know the the podcast king at this point. I mean, Adam yeah. just is kind of good in everything. He does play Dynasty. He's huge in DFS. He does. Uh, he might actually not play season long anymore, uh, or no, he's playing season long this year because we're doing teams together. Like we're doing some high stakes teams. But uh, you gotta have one in there. You gotta have at least one. Yeah, you gotta have one. And then, you know, Pat is just really good in this one area of fantasy that no one else even covers. No one else even talks about, you know, projecting plays per game. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've, I've talked to some of the best players in the, you know, best daily fantasy players in the world. And uh, like Drew Jinkmeyer, that's how he starts out his, his, prep, his um, prep for the week is he's ju he just projects plays to begin the week. That's the, you know, the first thing that he does. And, you know, I, I don't know if that's, you know, particularly common, but, you know, but Drew Dinkmeyer is also like a big time DFS player. He's not necessarily putting all that information out except for, you know, on his own website. Mm -hmm. So, um, which is, you know, behind a paywall. So, so we are, we, we can offer uh, that foundational analysis week to week on our website. And you can listen to like a podcast with uh, Pat Thorman on our website about it. And uh, his, his initial article uh, is also up there as, as part of free content. Yeah, I mean that's that's kind of the 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 mix the mixture, and then there's another guy named Taylor KB and another guy named Andrew Wiggins. They started this web this poker website back in the day called Card Runners, and it was kind of like the Roto Grinders of poker. Like they would teach you how to play poker uh, like through videos, you know. Okay. And they were like the first ones doing that. They're business savvy because they've already done this. They've already been entrepreneurs, you know. Okay. Yeah. So you guys have like a very well rounded team. It's made up of content creators, some smart people, maybe some dumb people. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, the jury's still out on it's that. It's a good blend. Yeah, it's a good blend. So you guys have a good thing going on there. Uh, I do kind of want to, I mean, I, I'm not sure if you'd be able to shed light on this because you're not really making the business decisions. Now, I guess break down the package that you guys offer. So if someone in my audience is interested in getting like the highest quality of fantasy content for the year, what exactly comes in the package and the price point of it? Yeah, I mean, it's so much stuff that, I mean, I, this is all I've been working on since like April, um, like after the draft uh, and just editing and, you know, and keeping it up to date. So it's not like you buy a magazine on the store shelf and it's, up, you know, it's outdated a week later and it's like yep. literally, you, you know, useless. Like all my stuff is updated every single day. 
yep. um, to account for, you know, injuries, trades, etc. There's so much stuff. It's just uh, in the, the draft kit, which is for season long players, it's uh, $30. Oftentimes, if you get the full East, uh, in-season package, actually, and you um, email our support, uh, they'll just give you the draft kit uh, uh, as like like complimentary. Um, but right now, what we are what we are focused on. Were you not Were you not supposed to say that? Is that like a <laughs> Is that has, like a little glitch in the system? Yeah. yeah, you might want to cut that out, man. <laughs> <laughs> no shot. Not, okay. <laughs> but uh, and then, but what we're we're working on really hard right now is preseason DFS. Okay. Um, have you guys ever played preseason DFS? I dabble with it a little bit, but I know that you guys are like the go-to. You guys are, uh, you guys really got that shit on lock. If you know what you're doing, you can make money. That's what I know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and the price for that is $60. Uh, but man, I mean, I, I made like, I make that back. $60, yeah. you know, on the hall of fame game, you know, there we go. Um, I was actually, I was in first in like a bunch of contests on FanDuel, but then that last touchdown to um, Jawan Winfrey. Jawan Winfrey is my boy. <laughs> cut my winnings by like 1,400. Oh, Ooh, ouch. And that was such a bullshit touchdown. Stop thing. it. <laughs> Come on. Stop it. I'm starting um, to hear that. Well, you got the smart quarterback play coming up on Thursday. We, we both know who that is, so um, I don't have to waste your time with that. Oh, are you going to say it's Daniel Jones? <laughs> Come on, of course. exactly what he's did, did you see that one throw he he made to the the third string running back um with the defenders in shorts the other day beautiful. oh yeah in shorts? beautiful yeah beautiful that always looks good in and it was wobbling too so you know you know they, they, they draft eli 2.0 the ball was wobbling it's great one of the issues with him in preseason dfs is that they can play tanny and loletta too yeah yeah right. I so think how much is he really going to? How is, much playing time is he really going to see in this first game? It, yeah, it might like be mostly by like committee. Valletta. I don't know. I, you got to wait till they cut someone or something. Well, yeah, they they got to cut one of them for some reason. That they're infatuated with Alex Tanny. I haven't yeah. even heard of him until he was on the Giants roster, and I still didn't want to hear about him because he's not any good. Um, but I think that first game, he's only going to play a few series. If yeah, I, we'll I, see, I, don't I mean, I don't know. I'd like to see him for two quarters. And I love like, that. And, and he's athletic. I mean, he averaged, what, like 37 rushing yards per game to run. Yeah. per start at Duke? I mean, he'll get, a ton of, he'll get a ton of run throughout the rest of the preseason. He we're just – we, as football fans, we're just fucking itching to see something happen now. We want it in week one. Yeah. It's just not – we're going to see seven snaps out of most of the starters, and then yeah. they're going to be off the field, and we're going to be like, fuck, we got to wait till next week. But we're still going to watch those games. 100%. We're going to watch, like, every single snap. Watch every, every snap. Game. but It's going to be beautiful. For this first week of preseason, one dude that I'm looking at is Tyree Jackson from Buffalo. Hell yeah, dude. So it's so it's Josh it's Josh Allen he's probably not going to play much, um, and then Barkley they only have three quarterbacks. You want to look at like depth charts that only have three quarterbacks. Yeah. Second quarterback is Barkley. We kind of know what he is, right? Bad. I'd hope so. Yeah. And Tyree Jackson is a monster. He was like the Senior Bowl arm. Senior Bowl MVP, I think. Uh, uh, aren't, aren't there two MVPs? Wait, I was going to say oh, no, Daniel, Daniel Jones, Jones definitely. The won Giants one automatically one. draft whoever the yeah. Senior Bowl MVP is. That's so. right. Three years in so a row, baby. Three years in a row. <laughs> Uh, no, yeah, he wasn't the Senior Bowl MVP then. Maybe he was of like practice. I don't know. Whatever. He's, he's well, he, he excelled. Like, he was like great in the combine. He did everything yeah. l leading up to it was great. It just, just wasn't much competition where he was playing. So obviously, he kind of took a back seat. But he's definitely a beast. Yeah, and so he's like the you know, and he can run. That is so yeah. important in preseason DFS quarterbacks that can run. You know, yeah, because no one's throwing up 300 passing yards yep. in a preseason game. Yeah, exactly. You if you can get like a rushing touchdown out of your quarterback. You know, like you're you're just winning everything. Right. That po and the pocket the pocket's going to break down more so than not. In yeah, the with the game, the first preseason game, he's going to book it outside and he's going to get all his yards for you. Second so. string O line, third string O line. Oh, I, I know what I'm playing this week. I want to backtrack a little bit, get out of uh, a little bit of giant talk and player analysis, and we'll get back to that in a second. I want to talk about the fantasy industry and like fantasy analysts as as a whole, right? People are really getting good. You know, your friend Josh and yourself and Adam are, are very, very good at breaking down numbers and getting analytical. And, of course, there's like this clash right now between analytics and um, watching film and things like that. I want to know what you think the future of fantasy football analysts possibly breaking into the NFL. Now, I know you're a friend of, 
uh, Warren Sharp. And I know he does some consulting with NFL teams, if, if I understand that correctly. Most I wouldn't, time, yeah. yeah, I wouldn't um, label him a fantasy guy. I just think he's a fucking very sharp NFL football mind. Mm-hmm. Um, Good at, pun. At what, oh, I didn't even realize I did that. He totally <laughs> fucked my flow up there. But uh, back, to, back to the point, like, do you think there's eventually will be acknowledgement of what's going on in the fantasy industry and, you know, making its way into real football and decisions that are made by fun offices and teams? Yeah, absolutely. It, it's already started to happen. Yeah, uh, I thought, yeah. I mean, Hermsmeyer consults for at least one team. There have been like just littler dudes on Twitter that, you know, don't really have as much of a following, but they're doing like really good, like really strong data analysis. They, um, I know that like, I know one dude who just got hired uh, by the Panthers. That's already, that's already starting. I mean, you hear about uh, Sean Payton, he has talked about publicly about how he thinks that fantasy football has actually fantasy football analysis has furthered the game. I mean, it has to, because if we spit out numbers right. and, and people make decisions and we're like, how could you make that decision with these numbers? Like mm-hmm. clearly so telling you that you're right wrong. here for, you, you know what I mean? And people are like yeah. in today's day and age, they, they want to know numbers backing things up and shit. So I, I can totally see why I just, you know, there's just so much hesitation from NFL teams and front offices and these older dudes that don't want to, you know, they have so much pride and stuff. They don't want to um, take a look at any of this stuff, but it's clearly right in front of their eyes. And, you know, one of the teams that is probably not looking at this data and probably not looking at the analytics because they've made some questionable decisions. I was actually listening to your most recent uh, established run podcast earlier today, you know, your updates on your top 150, and you started talking about some of the Giants players and you were like, I don't, you were like, I don't even, I don't even know what they're doing. And I started cracking up because I was in my car and I was like, Oh, uh, sorry, snacks. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I know you're, you're very sorry. Did you see that they had um, Sterling Shepard catching passes at practice? Oh. Call one and started shaking his hand after. No, 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 because Eli threw the ball so hard. Yeah, well, that's true. That's what I'm I don't saying. think that that was the case. So, <laughs> well, the tweet was Eli threw a fastball. Yeah. I mean, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Who tweeted that out? Tom Rock, Newsday. Okay, so we, we need to get to the bottom of this because for a long time, Evan, we know as, as a non Giants fan, I understand your objectivity to this. This is not, you know, this is not something that you're just attacking for the sake of attacking. Snacks thinks otherwise. Snacks thinks that you're buried in on the Giants, and no matter what happens, you won't leave them alone. And I could tell you, you know, I'm glad that you guys are friends now because if y'all ever ran into each other in real life, <laughs> there's a good chance Snacks before would probably, we became friends. We might try to kill you. Like, I, <laughs> I might have said it on one of these podcasts, Adam. I'm sorry, man. Yeah, he might have <laughs> called you out like 39 times already prior to this episode. But Snacks, lay, lay out your problems. Let's, let's have a little vent set. Yeah, free, bro. Rent Snacks. free. Yes, yeah, exactly. You're living in his head rent free completely. I'm, there's a lot of people that live there already. He's got a lot of shit going on in there. I got a lot of demons. Man. I want to preface yeah, this. A lot of demons. Next, I want to preface this by saying that you are speaking for the entire New York Giants fan base right now, yelling, we're, yelling at Evan. So everything we're wounded that yeah. you've thought, yeah, you guys are very wounded. You might need to see a surgeon after this. You I guys have. Um, Long awaited this moment. I know a lot of our audience is, is really riled up for this. I know. So before you speak, just just remember that you're speaking for all of me. Yeah, I, and I know. And I'm gonna try and keep it. Uh, I'm gonna try and keep it polite. No, fuck that. Go, go yeah, snack. you're right. You're right. Go, go you, 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 you gotta see the scars on my hands from punching MetLife Stadium walls over the last five six years. This is <laughs> this is no joke, man. I for when we started this, I I you know I, I've been a fan of you for a while, and then I all of a sudden this vendetta that you've had against, against my team, I consider myself a part of the team. I, I say we, I say I, that's, that's what it is. I don't. Snacks has two Super Bowl rings. I do. Yes. Fact, not opinion. Yeah, if you go on my Twitter, I'll, I'll reply to somebody if they talk shit about the Giants, and I'll just literally send a picture of the two rings that are on my finger that I got from Ahmad <laughs> Bradshaw. He let me put them on there, and he, you know, I took a picture of them. So, you know, I, I got, I'm tight with everybody. But my thing is, you know, I never, ever, ever, and I called you out on this right away. You blocked me, and that, this was, I gotta bring this up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I gotta bring this up. Go, go for it. You said I said something to you, and I, I probably cursed like like a jerk. You know, maybe I was a few daiquiris in, whatever the case was. And all of a sudden, I was blocked. It was just blocked. Next thing I know, I see you pop up on my Twitter. I'm like, how does he pop up? I'm blocked. And then it shows that I, I could hit follow. So you you must have unblocked me somehow, <laughs> some way. You're probably like, this sick, sadistic son of a bitch is worth <laughs> not getting blocked by. Then you said something, and I chimed in again and went back and forth, yada, yada, yada. We came here with DMs. I really like you. You're a very nice guy, and I really appreciate this. But I've never seen you go at a team 
like you do my Giants. I understand why you have um, – Dave Gettleman does live in 1970 NFL. I understand that. I get it. I hate the Saquon Barkley pick more than anybody. They'll tell you. The worst pick in franchise history, even though he's an unbelievable ball player. But this vitriol you have for them, I really <laughs> thought that they turned you down for a job or something. Like, <laughs> so you hold this vendetta against John Mara because, I, I don't know, he was, he was creepy to you. He, he fired you. He didn't give you an interview or whatever the case was. It's just, it was onslaught after onslaught after onslaught. Long-winded, long-winded. I could probably keep going, but I'm going to restrain. I'm going to let you talk. And then I'm going to say some of the good things that I think are happening in my <laughs> awful football world right now but floor is yours I mean I, I definitely have gone really hard on the Giants but I mean I've done this to teams like in the past like the Browns and Hugh Jackson I mean just just rolled on them every day like every damn day you know I, I used to do it to the Jets uh, under Tannenbaum oh um, the Dolphins under Jeff Ireland who actually has kind of remade himself uh, as, a, as an executive with yeah. the Saints and um has like kind of regained respect, but I used to just crush the Dolphins. Uh, they were really, really poorly managed under him. Uh, I mean, the Raiders, like every, I, th I think that every Raiders fan feels like the same way that you do about me regarding the Giants as, you know, they do like, I've had, like, I've gotten death threats from Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm sick, but I'm not that sick. <laughs> He won't threaten you. He'll yeah. just kill you. I won't threaten you. Yeah. Well, yeah, that too. I, I also don't feel very confident in myself fighting you. So, um, crush the, I crush the Redskins all the time. They're, all their fans think I have, like, some vendetta against them. No, I mean, it's just, like, the bad teams, bro. To you me, know? And it I, sounds like you're doing it to teams that deserve it. Yeah. I mean, that's how I view it. I'm like, Max is just very sensitive. So, yeah. Listen. I mean, Snacks is just, like, a really big fan. Yeah. So, he – I, I pump out this article at, at times uh, that it was written by a guy named Max Wenkos, who's like a, um, a psychologist. And it's about um, why, like about how like big, like fanatics, major fanatics, which snacks appears to be, um, they like feel personally attacked by like objective criticism. And I think that, you know, snacks probably doesn't even think that it is, that it is objective. You know, because because he paints his own kind of pictures. Which hey, which hey, it, Daniel Jones might be good. I mean, I think it's lower probability than was you know relative to his draft position. Like he shouldn't have been the sixth overall pick. Yeah. You I know, agree. but he could be successful. I mean, I think he probably realistically should have been like a second or third round pick. Um, but you know, like that doesn't mean he can't be successful. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think like maybe his his ceiling is kind of a kind of like an Alex Smith game manager type who can move around, which, I mean, that's not awful. You I don't would, want to take it at six. No, you don't take that at six. You don't, you you don't mind having it on your team. We were in a Nashville bar, and I was crying my eyes out because we <laughs> took him at six. Yeah, when uh, I say snacks are sensitive, I mean, we've seen him cry on the show like so many fucking times. I'm a crier. Ed. I really am. I'm, a, I'm an emotional guy. He gets it You're just passionate, man. You're just passionate. I am. That's, that's what I always tell him. I say, it, don't worry about it. Yeah, just passionate. Well, it's more than just a fucking game, okay? doing it for the content. And it's true that – that I only see the, the Giants when you talk. I, don't, I know you've, you've ripped other teams, I know, but I only see that. I really legitimately feel that, that I'm, a part of, I'm a part of the 53-man roster. It's, it's kind of a sickness. <laughs> like, I, I, I'm 150 pounds, 5'8". I wouldn't touch that roster if, if, God, if I, it was touched by the hand right of God, now. as my general manager said. Can't and can't get season tickets anymore. I, I can't get season tickets anymore. I'm banned <laughs> from the list, but it doesn't matter. That's, we're not bringing that up. These are all fucking facts, by the way. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> I've seen him punch the stadium walls. I've seen him get carried out. I've seen him be banned from this fucking stadium. And it's he's a fan of the stadium. I, I am. I was part. actually the the first ever playoff game against Knicks Falcons. I was a fan of the game. Eighty thousand people saw my my face, my Twitter handle on the big screen. But I digress. I just <laughs> I just think that while it all looks really bad, I think the Beckham trade they sh they they could have got more. Uh, but I also think he was he was checked out himself. I didn't like that they made him the highest paid wide receiver in football, and then he goes on ESPN with yeah, little Wayne dogs talking about like like Eli doesn't have it anymore. I don't know if this is where I want to be. Like if that's true, that's fine. I understand that. What he said in the interview was pretty much accurate, but not after what they they just gave you. What they made they made you the, the face of the franchise. I just thought that was bad optics. I understood why Dave Gettleman's thick old headed school nature wanted him out 
you know, that still irks me. Not franchise tagging Landon Collins or trading him at the deadline, getting him, letting him leave for nothing makes no sense. So there's been a lot of questionable moves, but I will say in two years of Dave Gettleman, we haven't seen all of them produce yet, obviously on the field. And I will never say a rookie or a second year guy is going to be a stud. I think the 14 draft picks he's made in two years are going to be 20 times better than anything in the previous regime. So that's the one thing I'm holding hope on. And yeah, Daniel Jones, if Daniel Jones is bad, I'm going to go into my thirties. I'm probably going to age horribly. His beautiful <laughs> red hair is going to be gone. I'll probably shave it off like Brittany did back in the early, early two thousands, whenever that was, it's going to be sad times. So the only thing I can do is hope and pray. I appreciate your objectivity. I know you're not loyal to one one base, one not, and I really apologize for the death threats. I will never do that to you. <laughs> <laughs> just, my, it's like, that might have been me, actually. That yeah, maybe, those I, threats, I do have three. I do have three burner accounts. I go after a few of the giant beat writers all the time, but um, it snacks, wasn't me. I promise you. Snacks, I, I, can I just say I don't do that, that that uh, you know, those words you just let out and that argument or whatever it was that just came out of you was very uh, well articulated. I'm really proud of you. That Thank was you. a lot of passion combined with a little bit of intelligence and yeah. it made you see, might've been the smartest thing you've ever said on, on the channel. It probably was. People um, are, people are going to be like, what the fuck happened to Snacks? I know they're all, everybody hates me in the comments. They're, all, they're, they're probably no, they, love like, wow, you, they love the passion. Yeah. Uh, well, you should see me September 8th against Dallas. Cause I swear to God, I'm going, yeah. <laughs> I'm going Evan dude. giants, money line, lock of the century, September 8th. <laughs> lock it in now. Lock it in now. I've actually been um, making sure that I get the Cowboys defense in every draft sh just so I could start them against Eli in week one. Facts. Like the number it, it one thing good start. is coming. People draft defenses without – like everyone coming. streams defenses, but they don't look at week one. I'm like, right. dude, look at the – Dallas is great. I think the, the whole NFC East, Philly's got a great week one matchup. I think Washington, home games, big fucking favorites. There's like a few criteria you need to smash, and Dallas – against the G-men are, are just the yeah, fucking Just what? I don't give a shit if they, get, if they score 30 points. Giants are winning that football game, 21-17. <laughs> hey, you know, what we need is uh, just Cowboys get two pick sixes off of Eli, and then uh, Giants come back and win 31-30. to I'm fine with that. No. Uh, you know what, Evan? I swear to God, <laughs> I used to hate your guts. I've slowly, <laughs> progressively started to like you more and more, coming on, talking to me, interacting, DM, everything like that. I might love you, man. <laughs> I might love you. I, I might you know, I, like put them in the list. It'll be like Giants, breathing, sex, Evan, Evan Silva. Silva. Yeah, <laughs> I might do it. I might do it. I really do. I don't even put my girlfriend up there. Sorry. Well, how about this? This one might even be better, man. Okay. Eli Manning throws two pick sixes in the first half. They bench him at halftime, bring in Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones rallies them back to victory like Brett Favre did in his first uh, start against the Bengals or whatever. Let's fucking go. I got, <laughs> I got DJ in the okay. in Scott Fishbowl. That's like my, that's my, do you? Possibly my quarterback. Three, really, yeah. really good call. Really <laughs> good know. call. Really good call. I okay. was trying to trade up in the Fishbowl, but you can't trade. So, but <laughs> Evan, if that happens, I'm going to come to you. I'll drive to you. I'll bring you, I'll bring you donuts, whatever you like. Nice steak I dinner. will do that. A nice steak dinner, wherever your favorite steakhouse is. We'll watch Thursday night football together. Everything <laughs> on me. Okay. Everything. Daniel Jones comes in that game and wins, and he's gonna he's gonna be a hero. He may he may be a bust the rest of his career, but if he does that week one against Dallas, <laughs> that was worth the sixth overall he pick the new in the 2019 <laughs> NFL draft. Right there. Let's boom. Fucking go. Let's fucking go. I love where that turn went. Let's make another fucking quick turn. Let's talk about some fantasy football because apparently Evan knows a thing or two about that. We're gonna segue into a uh, segment we call "Parade It or Fade It." We're going to read a statement, and if you think it's going to be true, you're going to parade it. If you think it's going to be false, then you're going to fade it, all right? So the first one up on this list, Sony Michelle or Julian Edelman are the top fantasy producer on the Patriots. Parade or fade? What, what is it? It's parade or fade? Parade. Like when the parade. Giants don't win a Super Bowl this year, they will not have a parade. Motherfucker, fade. I've seen two in 12 years. <laughs> I didn't fucking say anything about the last All year. right. Um, I'm going to say I'm going to say fade. Love it. So that means, but you know, I, and I and I think that um, those guys are kind of the favorites, you know, especially like based on average draft position right now. Yeah. But I think it's interesting to talk about ways that that could go wrong. You know, like exactly, uh, like Josh Gordon comes back. Stop um, that. Stop that. <laughs> you know, or uh, I mean, there's James. I don't mean gets hurt. I mean, he hasn't been super durable. Exactly. I mean, that's why he's got both the of thumb. these guys. Both these guys are the favorites, but both of them are consistently hurt. Right. I think the reminder. Right. 
for Julian Edelman, like we all love him because we're on this recency bias of what he did last year. Yeah, but dude. this little thumb injury just reminds us about what he's been previously, right? The years prior, it's like he's always been a little bit of a, a durability concern. So this reminds you. So you have Sonny Michelle semi dealing with the knee. He'll mm-hmm. always be dealing he's with it. He's been dealing with that knee. Yeah, it's going to be like that. Always will, right? And they drafted Damian Harris. So there's, you know, there's a concern about a 50 50 time split. If both of them are splitting carries, that means James White could possibly surpass them. James White's role is not going to change. So. Exactly. So he could still put up numbers. I don't think he's as good yeah. as what he was last they, year. They play that hot hand. If Damian Harris comes in and is, lights it up, he's, he's going to be playing more. So, so if you had to choose consistently one. Consistently over the years, you know, it was like LeGarrette Blunt in 2016. What, Deion Lewis, you know, close out 2017, James White last year. The cheapest guy in the backfield for the Patriots has been, you know, the league winner. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I think that's – I think this year, I think that Burkhead's kind of a little bit too far out of range at this yeah. point. But I think Damian Harris in like the ninth or tenth round, that's the guy this year, you know. Yep. Yeah, the Harris pick, I, I would have liked Burkhead this year because last year he was so expensive to get. Now you could take the discount. They drafted He's Harris, done. which probably means I think he has only problem the As an now. offensive playmaker and as a guy who might see, you know, possibly double-digit touches, that's not really in his range of He'll have that one game of four touchdowns from the goal line, but that's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and hope that you fucking played him in DFS that week. All yeah. right, so let's move on to the second one. The leading rusher for the Baltimore Ravens in 2019 is Lamar Jackson. Parade it or fade it? I think I'm going to parade it um, because he is uh, likely to uh, – he's the likeliest, like, member of the backfield that would be in the mix for uh, rushing attempts uh, to stay healthy. He's likeliest to stay healthy. Like, he's likelier than Mark Ingram to stay healthy. Why do you say uh, that as a quarterback that's so mobile? Mobility doesn't necessarily, like, trans, tr- translate necessarily to, like, higher injury propensity. I mean, Russell Wilson, like, has never missed a game. Yeah. No. That is true. Uh, Russell Wilson's also thick. Yeah, yeah. Newton's problems are like related to like his shoulder and his throwing technique. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's not because he's getting out there and like, you know, missing time because he's taking hits in the open field. He takes more hits, but he's like, you know, a great athlete. Lamar Jackson's like a great athlete. He did add some weight for what, whatever it's worth. I think he's up to like 220 or 218 right now. If I sweat it all back off, uh, you know, it, it, yeah, yeah. Right, dog, right week one. But, um, no, I mean, in terms of like, I mean, Mark Ingram is like definitively higher, like likelier to get injured than Lamar Jackson. Okay. Are I mean, we on? Are you never on college? Ingram? You know, I, quarterbacks like stay healthy for the most part. Yeah, that is true. Don't. Yeah, I guess I just look at like, uh, I think of Cam Newton and I think of these mobile guys and I'm always like, ah. Oh. You know, they're banged up, they're injured. But it's a stereotype. Well, I was just going to say, to play like a little devil's advocate here, you said most quarterbacks, you know, they mostly they stay healthy. Is that because most quarterbacks aren't running the ball? I mean, a lot of them, um, you know. Yeah, but I mean, I think that if we went through – well, I mean, just everything that an offense does, so much of what it does is designed to keep the quarterback out of harm's way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess the guys mm-hmm. who get injured the most are usually the ones not necessarily running the most, but probably taking the most pocket pressure, you know, like getting hit on plays that they weren't planned on getting hit from when the pocket collapses that's when the injuries occur you just I guess you just think of mobile quarterbacks getting hit but for the most part you slide get out of bounds you don't have to I mean I think Lamar Jackson is like more likely to get injured than like Tom Brady you know obviously Mm -hmm. yeah but um in terms of like one for one comparison with a running back no running backs are like slamming the ball inside the tackles and yeah you know like no they're they they run into car crashes you know Lamar Jackson runs away from people yeah. yeah, those quarterback design runs, they don't just have them running between the tackles. So, I see, I see what you're saying. Are you in on Mark Ingram this year? Are you a fan of him for fantasy? Because I'm, all, I'm so really. far out. Yeah, me either. Not really. Because um, I don't think he's going to catch any passes. I have him projected for like 19 catches, I want to say. Irrelevant. Um, like, they, the Ravens uh, running back targets per game went from like 8 last year to like 3.7 when, as soon as Lamar Jackson took over. Yeah. Um, Lamar Jackson is likelier to run and check down, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so, no, nah, I, I, I don't – I mean, I play in PPR leagues, you know, for the yeah. most part. I mean, and I'm also concerned about Mark Ingram's rushing touchdown upside because Lamar Jackson is going to run the ball in the red zone. He was, like, number eight in the NFL in red zone attempts last year, even though he didn't even start half the season. Yeah, and yeah. that was like – I remember in one of my videos I put out – um, it was like a, you know, running backs to stay away from, especially at their current price. And it was Mark Ingram was going in the fourth round. And I was telling people, I don't want any part of it. And I was like, I'm going to put the over under at six 
rushing touchdowns this year. You guys tell me if it's an over or under, and everyone slammed it in the comments like, oh, easy over, easy mm-hmm. over. I'm like, yeah, Lamar Jackson is there, one. And your point to being in PPR leagues, it's like, do you want a guy who's really about to rush for six touchdowns and not catch a lot of passes? Like, if, compared to the guys you can get in the fourth round that are wide receivers, you know, like the Kenny Galladay's, the Robert Woods is even like Brandon Cooks, Godwin, it makes no sense to – draft a risky running back like like Mark Ingram at that at that point um let's move on to our final parade it or fade it now this is not fantasy football related this is in honor of hard knocks so hard knocks first episode is tomorrow Tomorrow. so we haven't watched it yet by the time people watch this is Thursday you guys have already seen the first scene so you guys will know hard knocks will open with John Gruden down on all fours, smelling the football field. <laughs> Parade it or fade it. If you say fade it, we're editing it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, there are so many other possibilities, you know, for the way to take it over. No, there aren't. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think it's going to open with, if you had to guess? I mean, there's so many. There's, there's John Gruden. There's AB. There's Derek Carr. There's fucking Richie Incognito doing some psychotic shit. Oh like, shit, uh, that's right. Richie, Richard's on the team. Richard, Richard. Dick is on the team. <laughs> Richard's bro. on Dickie the team. Ing. Yeah. What, what is your uh, if you had to guess? What do you think they open with? Probably something uh, about Gruden. Yeah. Smelling the football field. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> right. 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 Makes sense. That is going to be one big of a shit show. It might be the greatest hard knock season ever. Although it's got a lot of hype. Dude. Almost too much hype. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a really nervous. That, I'm like kind of excited, but I'm all I don't know. I, I just want to see yeah, as a Broncos fan, Gruden's I'm, like the only care, guy I care about. I'm right excited here. to see the inner workings of a uh, failing so the, franchise. So Denver can watch it and be like, "This is what we don't need to do." But you I act like listen. Denver's some some staple of, of, of excellence <laughs> over the last fucking crazy? decade. <laughs> they are one of the most storied franchises in all of history. Yeah, well, your, your general manager uh, okay. who's one of the greatest. Sorry, 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 hold up. sorry, 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 sorry. We'll, we'll talk about this off the air. Yeah, sorry. so um, th- that's going to wrap up. I think I had a few more that I might have list- uh, fell off the show sheet, but it doesn't matter. We've had a fantastic talk today. Um, so that's pretty much going to wrap up the episode. Snacks or animal, you have anything you want to yell at Evan for before? No, I mean, I'm, I never had any problem with Evan. <laughs> I've always just been a fan, like your work, and never uh, wanted to curse you off or send you a death threat. So... <laughs> Just appreciate you coming on, man. This is awesome. Well, I will, I will back that up by saying I have cursed you out numerous times. <laughs> uh, not wanted to. I just actually have. But I think our, our friendship has, has formed from there, and, and we're really, really just appreciative. I know this has been in the works for like a month now, and thank you so much. I know our, everybody that's going to watch is going to love it, and we really appreciate it. So keep up the good work. We love what you're doing. And Let's have a great for season. On. Awesome. <laughs> so excited. Well, good luck with the show, man. Uh, I, you guys have like good production quality, and you know you guys are you guys are funny and pretty smart. So uh, you know, good luck with the show. Uh, I had I had a, a blast uh, doing this with you, and uh, you know maybe we'll do it again. Yeah, Definitely. hope so. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome having so. you on. I mean, from from where we are, like we're looking at you as as such a you know a, a giant in the industry. It's very fucking cool that you come on. And, you know, chop it up with someone yeah. uh, of our scale. Yeah. And I've seen you on shows that are even, you know, smaller than us. So it's really cool. Mm-hmm. I almost feel like you're running a fucking presidential campaign right now. <laughs> you're going to New York to kind of booze up the New York Giants <laughs> yeah. fan. Hopefully this sways them a little bit more in your favor. Snacks has a lot of pull with the fan base. We'll I do. He's not I a bad you. guy, all right, Giants fans? He's not a bad guy. He's not guy. the worst guy. He's not. Right? He's actually really good. And I'm going to send a uh, presidential He's voucher. endorsed to buy later. snacks. <laughs> so, you know, it's legit. He's got I'm the snacks. Him. All right, Evan, there's enough of us fucking babbling. Thank you again for joining us. And uh, we will... Stay in touch. All right, take it, take it easy, guys. Thanks, Ev. Thanks, Ev.